Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to this webinar on hydrogen research and standards. My name is Alice Hanley. I'm Senior Standards Officer at NSAI and I'm the Technical Secretary of our National Gas Technical Standards Committees. The purpose of today is to provide you with an overview of NSAI and standardization principles with a focus on hydrogen related activities and how researchers and innovators can get involved. By the end of this webinar, we hope to have sparked your interest and encourage you to get involved in some way in hydrogen standardization. This webinar will consist of four 10 to 15 minute presentations. Please use the Q&A mechanism to submit your questions throughout the presentations. And with time permitting, we will try to answer questions at the end. Any unanswered questions will be addressed offline. We will also circulate today's slides to all attendees. I will firstly provide a brief overview of standardization and how NSA, NSAI supports sustainability, particularly in the area of hydrogen. I will then hand things over to Paul Killeen, who will talk you through um, the reciprocal relationship between research, development and innovation and standards. Neve Conroy will then talk about her role as hydrogen standardization expert, and Ali Ektiari will give a summary of his research project, which is a joint venture between UCD and Gas Networks Ireland. So what are standards and who is NSAI? NSAI standards is responsible for the development and publication of Irish standards, representing Irish interests in the work of the European standard bodies, SEN and SENLEC, and international standard bodies, ISO and IEC. Standards can be thought of a formula that describes the best way of doing something, whether it's about making a product, managing a process, delivering a service, or supply materials. I've linked um, each logo on the right-hand side to their related website page so that you can have a look at their list of technical committees. And the link at the bottom will bring you to our NSAI training video giving an overview of standards. A huge part of NSAI's role in standardization is to connect various stakeholders and facilitate cooperation and agreement on best practice. Depending on the area of work, our Irish experts come from industry, academia, government bodies, consumer and societal organizations. They firstly join NSAI's technical committees, which are categorized into 10 sectors and generally mirror the structure of international committees. In today's context, hydrogen would fall under the energy, environment and utilities sector. The National Technical Committee's functions will then vary from development of national homegrown standards to monitoring and part, uh, participating in the standards work of European and international bodies. Standards are formed through a consensus-based process, taking into account any many voices as possible. Generally, committees will have a chairperson acting impartially in the process, a committee secretary, typically a standards officer, and then the committee members themselves. Documents are put together in an open and transparent way following set rules and procedures, with the key element being the consultation period, where opportunity is given to the wider public to comment. I've inserted a link to our NSAI training video providing more detail on the standards development process. NSAI continuously mon monitors policy development at national and international level. UNEC's sustainable development goals being one example, which would have led to the European Green Deal and has heavily influenced our national climate action plan. Each, I'm sorry, back, yep, yeah, thank you. Um, each of these initiatives have an impact on standards where they have to take into account environmental impacts and work towards climate adaptation and mitigation. As well as that, countries continue to move from a traditional prescriptive regulatory approach to co-creating a system of legis legislative rules and recognize standards and accredited conformity assessment. And it is here that NSAI can support a sustainable energy future by facilitating collaboration between policymakers, researchers, and industry experts. Here are a few notable energy related topics that NSEI committee members have been supporting. Our National Climate Action Plan of 2019 called for NSEI to produce a number of standards. And this year we 
published a standard on heat pumps, and we are close to completing our solar panels document. Hydrogen has been getting more and more attention in recent years with ongoing work and analysis on the potential of introducing hydrogen into the existing gas grid, as well as the use of hydrogen in transport. Potential future support also depends on the appetite and interest from our national stakeholders. For example, with the national government's focus on producing green hydrogen, there is a potential that a national committee can be created to support international work in this area. To give you some context and background to NSAI's uh, progression into hydrogen, I'd like to introduce you to the Gas Technical Standards Committees, who have been in operation for nearly 40 years now. The GTSC is made up of subcommittees reporting into the Consultative Committee, with the scope previously focusing on supply and usage of natural gas and liquid petroleum gas. Our current chairperson of the Consultative Committee is Liam Nolan, Head of Technical Development and Technical Training in Gas Networks Ireland. In 2019, the GTSC reviewed its scope given the advancements in industry, where it was expanded to include renewable gases. This led to, changes, to some changes to existing subcommittees and the creation of new committees, TC11 on gas quality and, work, and a new working group on hydrogen. There are three elements that our gas committees have been closely monitoring over the last while. Industries increased focus on sources of hydrogen for use in transport, energy, and hard to decarbonize sectors. The growing number of hydrogen initiatives at European and national le levels, notably the European hydrogen strategy, and then the increase in standardization activities, such as a pre-normative pre research on the blending of hydrogen within existing natural gas networks. It's envisaged that this work will feed into the development of a hydrogen standardization request, which will identify what existing standards to revise and what new standards to create. The challenges we see for our current gas committees are the lack of expertise on the GTSE in this area and covering such broad applications of hydrogen energy from production to transport to heating. A solution to this challenge has been a secondment arrangement. We welcomed Neve Conroy, who started a two-year secondment in June this year, as our dedicated hydrogen standardization expert. She is working closely with the GTSE to incre increase our pool of um, knowledge by informing members of hydrogen-related developments and help with recruiting Irish experts onto relevant technical committees. Later, she will talk to you about the hydrogen-related work that she has been involved in so far. I would like to conclude by showing you just a few examples of hydrogen related standards that have been published and new uh, documents that are under development. I've only included a small number as there are about 60 standards directly dedicated to hydrogen. As well as maintaining hydrogen dedicated standards, CEN and ISO committees are reviewing their existing standards within the gas infrastructure, such as pipelines, valves and fittings, where they are considering the impact of introducing hydrogen into the existing infrastructure. Other standards relate to safety of hydrogen, storage of hydrogen, hydrogen as a fuel in transport, and standards on the material compatibility with hydrogen. So that concludes my presentation. I am now going to give the floor to my colleague, Paul Killeen, who works closely with the research and innovation community in Ireland. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Alice, for that. Hard act to follow. So uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Paul, as Alice said, and I, I spent a fair bit of my time working to try and bridge the gap between um, the world of research and uh, the market using standards as that bridging mechanism. So I'll take you through a couple of slides here. So this slide is from the European Commission uh, talking about how they see the importance of standards from a policy perspective um, as a channel uh, for market adoption of research results and broad diffusion of innovations. Um, also as essential to, for EU competitiveness. And they state here, the Horizon 2020 will give strong support, which is basically project funding to the market uptake innovation, supporting standards through research and putting science into standards. Uh, also in Horizon Europe, which is, as you know, the follow on, they're even putting more emphasis on standards as a bridging mechanism. And they've asked uh, a number of us in the European standards and research group to train their project officers on 
on that so that they can review proposals and make sure that they're addressing standards. So why standards? Well, at a high level, they help bridge this gap that we all know about between research on the left there and the markets, international markets on the right and, and society on the right. Uh, the, the standards help build trust and confidence so that those, those customers uh, can adopt the new technology, in this case, hydrogen. Uh, and as we say here with the arrows, the first thing you should do really as a researcher or innovator is inform yourself of what the existing standards are. And Alice gave a nice uh, overview of that initially here today. And then when you do your research work, take look at the outputs and see what of that of those outputs or results can be put into either new standards or existing standards. And those then will go to the market and will scale and have a big impact basically. Um, and of course, you know, hydrogen, green hydrogen can have huge impact for us all in the future. So uh, it's a great uh, area to apply this, this approach. Um, and then this is just a quote here from Dave Lewis, who's professor in, uh, the T in TCD. And he's also very involved in the S5 ADAPT Center. Um, and as you can see here, he believes that uh, researchers uh, can have a huge impact from the research by engaging in standards, uh, work with industry to develop, uh, you know, uh, high understanding and interoperability of their of their results, uh, see the results in, in in deployment at large scale, uh, develop a lot of collaborative networks, which is, you know, as, as Alice mentioned, <clears throat> the process of developing standards is all about networking and collaboration and consensus. So you meet an awful lot of experts from industry, academia, public sector. Uh, regulators, etc. So it's a great way to, to network um, and meet people for your next uh, consortium. Um, okay, and influence public policy. Uh, here I've just taken, you know, the typical three pillars. This is a Horizon 2020 in the green, excellent or deny, industrial leadership, societal challenges. And as you know, uh, Horizon Europe is pretty much similar with just a stronger emphasis on innovation and, and scaling up innovations, which again, um, standards can really help with uh, and around each of those gears then uh, there's this text to say how standards can help you so on the excellence you know you can build your reputation if you've involved in international standard uh, build networks broad dissemination impact well beyond the the project itself um, if you're in an international standard or if you've helped develop an international standard and of course funding success uh, and then in terms of market access on, on the on the right hand side um they're all related to market access and scaling uh, and complying with regulations as will be the case for safety and, and other aspects of hydrogen and then of course societal challenges as uh, sustainability being the big one here we're talking about today i suppose in the context of hydrogen green hydrogen and, and, and the likes um so yeah we can move on then okay so Really, what do leaders do then uh, in this game of standards development? Um, well, the global innovation leaders do, as, as kind of outlined there in the text, they get ahead of the curve, actively engage in providing technical contributions to the standards in question, in this case, hydrogen standards. They build support for their proposals and get their ideas into the standard. Sometimes that's just ideas. So it can be also intellectual property in terms of protected patents which is another topic for another day, but, but that's another thing that can be done and you can generate a lot of licensing revenue from that. Um, or, yeah, but, but typically it's leveraging active involvement in a game trying to market advantage. Um, and some of the logos there you might recognize, some of them you won't, uh, but Fraunhofer, for example, you'd all be aware of as a, as a very large research entity across Europe. They do a lot of work in this where they take their research and use it to inform standards and some of the companies on the left iona was a spin out from ucd a long time ago or tcd sorry a long time ago that scaled up by doing this and scaled up their, their startup which spun out of research from trinity uh, and uh, i won't go through the others but but uh, i'll have links at the end to any uh, some of those that you can see the stories around this, those success stories of how they use standards to scale and then okay what about your own personal funding proposals that you have to put in to different funding bodies, whether they're Europe or Ireland, uh, whether it's SFI, EI or whatever. Particularly for Europe, uh, there's strong emphasis on, on this and we're getting there in Ireland as well. 
So on the, on the black text there, you're well used to the different stages of what you do as a researcher. We identify new areas for research, draft your proposals, perform the projects, and try and diffuse the results. On the white then, it's I've just we've integrated here what how the standards can help at the different stages. And over in the box on the right hand side, I'll just go through that there, the core pieces really. So the first thing you should do is really screen existing standards. What are the existing standards in your area um, that you're proposing to do research on? And you can do that through the NSI standards collection, which is available through your local university or library or uh, college library. Um, and if you can't, you should, your librarian should give you access to that or should tell you where it is. If you don't or can't find it, just let us know. We'll make sure you get access through, uh, through that. That's an international set of standards, covers thousands of standards. So you should be able to find most of the existing standards in your area. Then based on that, you can identify relevant standards committees that are developing standards in that topic area. So what is the technical committee? What's the working group that's working on it? Um, and then you can state in your proposal um, those type of things. At least you can, if you're aware of what's going on in the state of the art of standards. I know you're well used to doing state of the art in terms of publications, maybe a bit on patents, but the probably most relevant state of the art in a lot of ways is what are the existing standards in the area. And so you might reference in, in your proposal, you know, we will you know, identify the standardization potential of our project results. So you might say we found a gap in the standards and we were going to look at addressing that gap and we will discuss potentially with a technical committee X, Y, Z, whatever the technical committee was. So based on, on point one and two, you can say a lot of general things in your proposal that will help uh, the evaluators know that you know what you're talking about and that you're going to do something valuable in terms of impact through standards. Um, here's just one example that I've just taken. It's uh, called you know, Saturn project around underwater acoustics. It was a Horizon 2020 project. And this is an extract from the proposal text. The researcher was a researcher from UCC and the Mary, uh, Mary, the Mary SFI Mary Center. And I won't mention their name now, but but thanks to that person for, for giving us the, 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 the quotes here. Um, as you can see, they, they said they were going to deal with standards in their, in their proposal and they were going to get involved, stakeholder groups involved. And then the evaluation report uh, referenced that. Um, the objective of standards was, 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 was uh, taken on board and was, was uh, one of the reasons that they, they got the funding and that they were already involved in some standards development, as you'll see there in the red text. And then just the next slide, it's just the, you know, a picture of their project proposal in terms of the work package structure that you typically see and you're well aware of, of course. And you'll see in the middle there, the work package two is on standards and measurement. And you can see that it interfaces and they've designed it to interface to all the different other work packages, including impacts, of course. Um, you see there the vertical arrow of standards, test uh, signals and terms up into the impact. And then the arrow is going to all the other places in terms of dissemination, et cetera, stakeholders and policy. So they, they did a good job on integrating standards into their proposal. Um, and they're, they're going to have a real impact on the standards. A number of the people in the project are now involved in uh, what we call NSCI national committees who, who are in, uh, directly inputting into the international standards in those areas. And then just some case studies here. I'll leave you with these, but there's a, this is an example here of an Austrian spin-out company, a uh, spin-out from a small enough Austrian university who got involved in video standards. It doesn't matter what the areas, could be hydrogen standards. Hopefully in the future here, we can see examples of scale-up companies. Uh, and this video has the researcher talking and the CEO who they, who they brought in to help run the company because the researchers wanted to stay in research, which is fine. Um, and then also the venture capitalist who funded the company. So it's a good example if you're a researcher and you want to, to get uh, you know, funding or, or personal money <laughs> from a spin out, you don't have to go with a spin out, you might want to, or you might not want, might not, not want to go with a spin out company, but here's a great example of where a researcher um, did very well financially based on his research work. Um, and then the Iona story is, uh, down below at the end and it 
uh, that's Chris Horn, who was the founder of Iona, and he gave a talk a number of years back in NSAI of how they used their engagement in standards development to help scale their spin-out company. Um, and then I suppose to finish with the vision here from an NSAI perspective is to get more of people like yourselves as leaders in standards development. So we get Ireland you know, ahead of the curve and setting, helping set the standards for, for Europe and the world. Um, and that'll help uh, Ireland from lots of different perspectives, as you can imagine, both yourselves, your own career and, and Ireland broadly and Europe. And then just, I've got some links here. As Alice said, we'll be sending around the slides later. Um, on the links, you can learn a bit more about the various topics we talked about, including success stories, learning materials that were put together for researchers on how to engage in standards, etc. So I'll pass on over now to my colleague, Neve, our uh, hydrogen expert for standardization. So over to you, Neve. Thanks. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, my name is Neve Conroy, and as Paul said there, I'm the hydrogen standardization expert with NSCI. I'm on a two-year secondment from Gas Networks Ireland, and my background is largely um, in network operations, so I have 14 years experience, um, mainly across commissioning live gas, um, AGIs, um, and everything from emergency response, um, so very much a practical, I suppose, focus uh, I'm bringing to, to this secondment. Um, so as I said, the secondment is funded by Gas Networks Ireland, and I'm largely focused on the, I suppose, the changes to standards that would be required to accommodate blends of hydrogen onto the network. But from an NSAI perspective, I'm also following all hydrogen developments that are happening in Ireland at the moment. So I'm participating on a number of national and international committees, and I will be focusing on the GERG pre-normative research project in the next couple of slides in, in, in great detail. Um, but what have I done since I started? Well, we've set up a new hydrogen working group, which as Alice said, it sits under the GTSC Central Committee. And this is chaired by Liam Nolan in Gas Networks Ireland. So the hydrogen coordination working group, it's comprised currently of all the chairs of each of the GTSC subcommittees, but we've also representatives from the CRU and industry. And we do want to increase the, 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 the hydrogen experts on this group. So I use this group currently to agree the focus and direction for what is communicated to each of the subcommittees in relation to hydrogen. And we agree any new scopes of work and the nomination of specific hydrogen experts. So just taking a step back, um, hydrogen in a gas network, there are many, many challenges. Um, and for gas networks to even think about blending hydrogen into a gas network, there will be a change to the safety case required. So customer safety is up there at the forefront of, of what ga gas networks do. And I've just a, a diagram just to kind of show a, a practical example of, of a challenge, one particular challenge. So this was a Tiger test in the UK. So you can see there what you're used to seeing if you have a gas a gas uh, appliance at home, 0% hydrogen, you've that nice blue flame. And then when you have 70% hydrogen, the flame dramatically reduces in visibility. And that's just a very simple uh, example of a challenge, but then focusing in on leakage, you know, hydrogen is a much, much smaller molecule than natural gas. So will the existing gas detection equipment be suitable that we have on the gas network at the moment? How will the materials degrade from our older steel pipes to certain types of valves, and then odorization, will the existing mercaptan um, be suitable? And then from as a network operator, gas networks will have to ensure the hydrogen quality that will be injected onto the network. And they will also have to um, stand over the, the blend quality for downstream customers, and especially sensitive customers like um, power stations and also certain industrial users. And metering billing for different blends, this is a, a very complex area, but a very important area. Um, and it's widely quoted that 20% at a 20% blend, existing customer equipment will be fine. But again, there'll be a certification and co compatibility process here. So standardization activities, what's happening currently? So the SEND TC234 um, committee, which is the Gas Infrastructure Committee, has a number of working groups, and I appreciate this is a very busy slide. But currently, these working groups, um, they're all revising EN standards, but a lot with hydrogen in mind. And I will be focusing in on working group 13, which was a new working group set up to look at the pre-normative research that would be required to accommodate blends of hydrogen onto the network. And it's also worth, worthy to note that CEN TC234 have um, a current call for hydrogen experts. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so the pre-normative research project is being, in, being completed by GERG, which is a European gas research group. So this is a collaborative group uh, for gas with a strong industry focus. And, and you can see some of the, the members here. So as you can see, there's a key players are here in the gas industry. Um, and there's also research centers and universities as part of this group. And recently, uh, Gas Networks Ireland became a member of GERG. So the pre-normative research project itself, it was commissioned by the EU Commission. And as I said, it's contracted to GERG and it's monitored by CEN TC234. And over the course of a year, they're producing a detailed gap analysis and proposing research projects to remove the key technical barriers to accommodate hydrogen natural gas blending and indeed 100% hydrogen onto a gas network. They're also identifying existing standards to be revised and new standards to be developed. So this project started almost a year ago now, and we're expecting finalised reports that will be published by GERG, hopefully in January, February 2022. And when these reports are published, we hope to run another um, session like this, where we will communicate the exact you know, pre-normative research that's, that's been published by GERG. Next slide, please. Okay, so this project is focused on nine uh, key areas which largely mirror you know, some of the key challenges I talked about. So these nine areas are seen as the most important technical gap barriers to be overcome to accommodate blending of hydrogen onto a gas network. And I'm just going to use the following slides to focus in on uh, two or three of these, uh, of these uh, topic areas and just give you a kind of a feel for the types of pre-normative research or the types of gaps that, that GERG are calling out at the moment. Next slide. So the next few slides, they, these are from GERG, so um, they're very much draft, as I said, um, so, and the final reports will be issued in the, new, in the new year. So looking at priority one, which is safety, leaks obviously is, is, is a very important uh, concern. So one gap in knowledge is to prepare a guideline on determining the acceptance criteria for hydrogen leaks and suitable methods for determining leaks, and there will be associated uh, pre-normative project associated with this. And then for the next few slides, I'm just going to really give you a whistle stop tour of, of the types of other uh, research topics that might they might be calling out. So assessing hydrogen leaks from different connections, as you can appreciate, we have numerous net connections on a gas network from threaded fittings to bolted connections. And for the different hydrogen blends and at different operating conditions, um, there's a lot of assessment in terms of hydrogen leaks uh, that could arise here. Um, the next topic would be study the effectiveness of the current leak de de detection technologies for hydrogen natural gas and hydrogen um, onto a gas network. And then study safety zone adjustments under hydrogen blending. And then moving into priority two, gas quality, uh, metering is going to be a big issue. So assess the impact of hydrogen natural gas blends on the meteorological behavior of fiscal flow meters. And then the last priority area, priority eight, which is end users, users um, domestic customers, evaluate affordable ways to adopt sensitive existing appliances to, to the blends of hydrogen. So there will be, you know, um, adoptions to be made to existing appliances, but whatever is required will have to be affordable for gas customers. Um, assess hydrogen detection for the combustion control of boilers. And finally, assess hydrogen leakage risk from domestic and commercial appliances. So that will hopefully just give you a kind of a snapshot of, of the types of, of, of research, but you know, there will be detailed reports produced for each of the, the research areas and there's, there's quite a large amount of research being called out. Uh, so I just want to highlight that. Um, also, uh, GERG are um, also involved in a, in a separate hydrogen uh, research roadmap, which is looking at really a longer term um, project. It's a really longer term project and it's focused around six themes. So it's looking at the research that is required over the next five, six years. Uh, and again, will inform standards also. So you can see these are the six themes and, and largely they, 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 they follow with the, you know, the types of uh, gaps that you might expect. Next slide, please. So in terms of Gas Networks Ireland, uh, what are GNI doing? Well, as I said, Gas Networks Ireland will have to build up a body of evidence. Number one, 
you know, for, to, to satisfy themselves, but also for the safety case that would have to be submitted. So they have created a hydrogen innovation centre in West Dublin, and they're completing a number of trials um, to ensure that the existing gas network is capable of safely transporting and storing hydrogen. And there are several potential research projects being proposed as part of this trial. And um, the photograph here is actually taken uh, in the Gas Innovation Centre and you've Liam Nolan on the, the left hand side. And as Alice mentioned, he is not only chair of the uh, Central Committee for the GTSEs, he, he also chairs the Hydrogen Working Group um, and he's head of technical um, standards and training in, in Gas Networks Ireland. And Ali Akatari, who will actually follow me now in the next in the next slide, is also photographed here. Um, and Ali will now talk to you about a project that he's currently working on, which is a UCD GNI joint project. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Neil. And hello, everyone. Um, I am Ali Akhtiari, a senior researcher in Energy Institute of University College Dublin and in Hydrogen Innovation Centre of Gas and Technology Ireland. Um, my background is mainly in downstream engineering and modelling of gas systems incorporating gas quality. Um, I'm currently um, working on testing of blended hydrogen, as Neve mentioned, and this project is a joint venture between UCD Energy Institute and a GNI Hydrogen Innovation Center, which is funded by Gas Networks Ireland. And today I will give you a brief talk on gas quality variation in the energy transition to a green gas system. And I will be uh, presenting the current work packages uh, for testing of hydrogen blends. I will be um, addressing the uh, existing challenges firstly, and then uh, introducing a potential solution for our energy system by presenting green hydrogen um, today. Um, the climate change is a gl global concern as you know very well. So uh, the primary idea is to reduce the dependency on fossil fuels by increasing number of renewable energy installation. Um, following this solution, um, there will be excess renewable electricity, uh, which is non-transportable, call it dispatch down or non-transportable renewable electricity. Uh, the challenge occurs when the renewable energy storage is an issue. So, uh, because the renewables are intermittent and end users are not able to switch on renewable electricity whenever they want. So, yeah, because of that, this is a challenge. So uh, what is the solution? No, uh, in the next slides, I will uh, focus on, on, on that. And let's, let's see what is the solution for the challenge. Uh, green hydrogen is coming, you know, uh, from renewable sources and will be transported into the gas network. The question that can be investigated is how to adopt the gas network to have admissible hydrogen. This is the uh, practical question that we are going to answer. A uh, new technology of power to gas, as you can see a process flow diagram here that's uh, showing a power to gas system to generate hydrogen. Um, as new, this is a, a new interconnection energy system is a potential to be, and can be used to convert excess renewable electricity to renewable gas. Uh, using huge potential of current gas pipelines in transmission system and also in distribution pipelines. Um, this capacity can provide a large range, I mean the la large range uh, higher than one megawatt for long-term renewable storage. It's also compatible with an electricity grid, which is dominated by renewable uh, power generation. So uh, this is important to know. And it's uh, it also increases the flexibility of the combined gas and power grids in an integrated energy system. Next, please. <clears throat> so for investigating the potential of gas transports for storing and transporting hydrogen, uh, two main steps have been implemented by UCD and GNI. The first approach uh, is doing valid modeling tools to investigate how hydrogen will impact on the transmission gas system, uh, when there are large variation of gas quality. I mean, uh, so to, to, to see operational, to investigate, to analyze the operational variable of gas network by uh, injecting green hydrogen into the pipeline. Uh, the op operational parameters such as flow rate, pressure drop, energy density, um, uh, gas density, uh, material equipment, and, leak, and also uh, uh, leakage in the system before and after blend 
having models. So the models, we created these tools. So the first step of research has been done. If you are interested in, they are accessible to read in published papers and technical reports. And we would be happy to be in touch with you about both these. And the second step is to investigate whether the current appliances are efficient to burn hydrogen plants. And we are going to investigate and also to validate the model codes and standards by testing of blended hydrogen in a distribution system. So what level of hydrogen concentration is admissible in a gas system? So we present a solution using hydrogen, I mean, the using power to hydrogen. So the question is, so what level of hydrogen concentration would be permissible, admissible, and how much hydrogen, I mean, can inject into the pipeline. And there are limitations in accepting a hydrogen level by different gas-based fuel devices. Uh, concerning operating limits such as Warby index, as well as material compatibility, and safe permissible hydrogen concentration, the upper hydrogen limit have been considered uh, in practical in a standard project. And in this, in this uh, uh, diagram, uh, you can see what is the maximum level of hydrogen in different segments on different entities. And the gas distribution pipeline can convey up to 50%, even 100% hydrogen concentration, um, depending on the type of pipeline components and the designated as standard. So they can have up to 100% hydrogen. Uh, however, because of the end users device, it's the main concept, the allowable hydrogen percentage is likely to be at a maximum blend of 20% in distribution networks. Uh, next, please, next slide. Thanks. The table presents here um, differences in physical values of hydrogen and natural gas, uh, such as um, normal density, higher heating value, will be in data, et cetera. Uh, what the important parameter that Neve mentioned is the small si size of uh, hydrogen molecules, diffusivity of hydrogen molecules, the movement of them. Um, um, or the parameters that impact the leak rate. Uh, these parameters depend on the concentration of hydrogen blend through the pipelines. Uh, this plot shows, I like this plot, <laughs> um, the current limits of hydrogen fraction in pipeline. Uh, uh, this plot uh, considered the Wobi index and caloric value limits in X and Y axis, as you can see. Uh, according to this plot uh, provided by the European standard, uh, the red area relates to common business practice, uh, CBP. And if you search, you can find information about this, which is appointing the gas quality criteria specification uh, used in Europe for natural gas. This is the limit, uh, er, limited area that we have to uh, keep the hydrogen percentage through the pipeline. The hydrogen content should not exceed 15 to 20 percent in using existing infrastructure. And since above 20 percent, there are technical concerns due to safety perspective, uh, metering, and energy conversion. Um, differences in caloric value and Wobi index of hydrogen uh, volumetric hydrogen flow rate in, in pipeline. In the existing transmission gas system, Wobi index should not exceed the limits. As a consequence, the natural gas may not meet the um, quality and safety requirements providing the relevant standards. And the current European standards, which consider the gas quality of hydrogen blends, or um, as an example, I can say EN uh, 437 for the gas, uh, test pressures and appliances categories to just categorize the appliances and, and uh, if, if they need to be upgraded using, to, to use hydrogen in the future. And also EN 17. 533 gases, hydrogen cylinders, and tubes for stationary storage and uh, the related standards, for example, EN 122261 for different metering system and material devices that they have to be compatible and to be tested to have to, to measure hydrogen flow rate. Um, the next slide uh, will be show you here the uh, scenarios for hydrogen balance, the current project that we are. It's an ongoing, uh, ongoing project. Uh, the scenarios for hydrogen blend tests will be uh, testing cylinders with the natural gas, including uh, firstly, uh, less than 
0.1% hydrogen, just almost pure natural gas and pure methane. Then we will test 2% hydrogen, 5%, 10%, and finally 20% hydrogen blend with natural gas. The work packages, as you can see in this slide, of uh, these uh, experimental projects are um, measuring calorific value, gas leakage rates, and measuring um, uh, accuracy of meters, flow gas analysis, flame specifications, pressure drop, and combustion and ignition temperature tests. Uh, the devices to be tested include a new home heating boiler and a home heating boiler, which has been used in a number of years, and also a stand along gas hob, a combined cooker, and gas oven. Uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of recent photos of Hydrogen Innovation Center uh, calculated in, in Browns Bar in Dublin by GNI. And uh, these are buildings that we just use this, uh, this, 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 this center to test the hydrogen. And here you can see uh, hydrogen cylinders uh, in custody, which are stored in, in a canopy in, in Innovation Center in Browns Bar. And we just, as I, as I said, the, the plenty of just uh, hydrogen percentage from zero to 20 percent. And also this picture shows the inside of the test area in Brownspawn. And you can see uh, the inlet stream of hydrogen from bottles and the places that we took the picture with Liam from bottles and appliances, which are, and also the appliances, the boilers and oven and gas house that are going to be tested in the close future. Uh, this slide shows uh, the collaboration of UCD Energy Research with GNI on this project. Wobi Index and uh, the blue one for GNI were the work packages that GNI uh, in, in Browns Bar uh, focused, and uh, the green box is the in, will be run in, in UCD, uh, uh, UCD Energy Lab. And um, okay, because of time, just you can pass this slide and it's important to mention that the work packages oriented by the green dash line are, are the uh, ongoing tests, uh, which are pressure drop, flame pictures, and combustion temperatures for natural gas and blends that uh, they, they, they are almost done and uh, or mainly done. And in the blue line area, the packages will be developed in the, in the next couple of months. And uh, so just the uh, almost the last slide, what is the goal of all these tests? It's an important question. Just I, I can say we are going to investigate firstly, is it safe? And then how much does the uh, addition hydrogen impact the operation, the operational variable, pressure drop, flow rate, density, energy, uh, energy density, and et cetera. And finally, providing reference data for all relevant parties such as an NSA, Oh, and uh, yeah, mm, that's it. And thank you for listening to my presentation today. The hot, and just also at the end, I would like to add that Gas Network Ireland supports research projects by providing innovation funds and utilizing the Hydrogen Innovation Center in Browns Barn in Dublin for research and development purposes. Thanks, and Neve to you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ali. Um, just a reminder, everybody, if there's any questions that anyone has, just to pop them in the Q&A and we'll, 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 we'll answer them at the end of the, the webinar. We're very close to the end now, I have just two slides. Um, so next steps for NSAI and hydrogen. Well, we're, I suppose we're following all the national policies in, in relation to hydrogen and just watching these very co closely at the moment. And we're also preparing for the standardization request from the European Commission. So the standardization request is, is really the formal starting body, a starting point uh, for standards bodies like the NSAI um, to, to update their standards. And it, it also gives a timeline uh, for when standards will, will need to be updated. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to continue to engage with new stakeholders and recruit experts, uh, hopefully across academia industry and government will continue to communicate the international and European standardization activities and particularly the pre-normative research um, for, for, for the academic sector. We will review current Irish gas standards in conjunction with our existing uh, gas technical standards committees and we'll consider potential areas to reflect hydrogen using the information we've obtained from studies so far. 
linking academic research to international standards development in the area of hydrogen, it's a great opportunity. We have a very strong research capabilities on this island and through collaborative efforts across academia, standards and industry, we have a great opportunity here to really solve some of the gaps that exist if we focus on, on what we're good at in this country. Um, next slide, please. 